So you built your brand new gaming PC, but you can't quite stretch your budget to get that GPU you've been after. Don't worry though, because AMD have dropped their G-Series APUs, which actually have pretty decent integrated graphics. But to find out how decent the iGPUs are, I've tested the Ryzen 5 8600G to see, maybe you might be able to game without a GPU for a while, or should you? The Ryzen 5 8600G is a brand new APU based on the Zen 4 architecture and this means it gets all of the benefits of AM5 including DDR5 support, a long socket lifetime and well I would say PCIe Gen 5 but the 8600G doesn't support it. More on that in a bit. More importantly about this APU though, it has incredible integrated graphics with the Radeon 760M iGPU which is based on RDNA3. So unlike the 5600G, which was based on Vega, which at the time was quite old, Vega was getting on a bit by the time the 5600G come out. So it's good to see modern integrated graphics in the Ryzen G APUs. This does come at a cost, however, and it isn't just more money you'll need to be paying. The 8600G does have cut down L3 cache like the 5600G before it, as it only has 60 megabytes compared to the 32 megabytes on the Ryzen 5 7600. It also has a very annoying PCIe configuration, whereas the graphics or the top PCIe slot, which is directly connected to the CPU, only has a PCIe 4.0 ATX interface. So if you had a 16X graphics card, which you wanted to put in here in the future, it will be running at ATX speeds, which, on a lot of GPUs, probably wouldn't be a problem, but this is quite annoying. And by the way, did I mention the Ryzen 5 7600X has a full 16X interface, which is PCIe Gen 5. So in order to see how good integrated graphics are in 2024, I've tested the Ryzen 5 8600G in my AM5 gaming PC, which has a Gigabyte B650M Gaming X AX motherboard, 64 gigabytes of Crucial Pro DDR5 clocked at 5600 MHz, I know I'm still trying to source a speedy kit of 32 gigabytes, but I might have done so. More on that in a future video or something along those lines. And the SSD I'm using is the Western Digital SN770 2 terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD. Lastly, I've tested using the latest driver, which is actually a possibility due to the RDNA 3 graphics instead of Vega, which was on the previous APU. So without any more talking, Let's see how it gets on. Throwing the 8600G in the deep end with Cyberpunk 2077 and 35 FPS on average with that 1% low of 25 frames per second isn't that bad at 1080p if I'm honest. I was probably expecting a bit less than that so props to the 8600G here. Enabling FSR does increase the average frame rate by 8 FPS and the 1% low also goes up by another 4 frames so if you was after a bit more performance in a pinch and you're not that concerned with image clarity, I'd recommend enabling FSR quality on the 760M iGPU. F123 is the sort of game you would probably be playing on an integrated GPU like this, and to be honest, I thought this was pretty disappointing. The average frame rate at 63 FPS isn't that bad. The main problem is the 1% lows at almost half of that 63 FPS. This indicates a lot of stutter and I did observe this while the benchmark was running so F123 may not be the best game for the 8600G's integrated graphics. A surprise to me was how well Spider-Man Remastered ran on the 8600G, getting just south of 50 FPS on average with a 1% low of 34 frames per second means decent performance in my opinion and at native 1080p you can't really argue that much because you're not even playing on a graphics card, it's integrated GPU. Enabling FSR on quality does net a few more frames but to be honest it's nothing game changing and I don't really think it's worth the hit in quality so I'd probably just stick to native in this game if I'm honest. Rainbow Six Siege is proper Ryzen 5600G territory, getting 164 frames per second on average, and that 1% low was also looking brilliant at 136. This means the frame delivery is nice and smooth, and better yet, you're set for a 144Hz experience without a graphics card, which is pretty mind-blowing if you ask me. If you told me 
Hogwarts Legacy would get at least 30 FPS on a Ryzen 5 8600G's integrated graphics. I would be pretty skeptical, but to be honest, it's possible. 30 FPS at native 1080p with a 1% low of 23 frames per second is pretty good performance in my opinion. Enabling FSR basically does nothing in this game. It adds an extra two frames per second for both the 1% low and average frame rate. So I'd recommend just disabling that altogether and play at native in Hogwarts Legacy. As 30 frames per second on average on the low preset is basically like Xbox One levels of performance. So that's not that bad if you ask me. One game that does perform well though is Counter-Strike 2. Albeit this is a very CPU demanding game, not that much on the GPU, but 135 frames per second on average with a 1% load just south of 100 FPS means the gameplay is smooth and it's also very decent as well if you ask me. So if you had a 144Hz gaming monitor, Counter-Strike 2 is certainly playable without a graphics card. Last game up today is another esports game and that is Fortnite. I've set it to the performance API here as it's very fitting as we want all the performance we can get today and 182 frames per second on average with a 1% low trailing that by 52 frames per second is not bad performance at all. Yet again, the 8600G is capable of a 144Hz competitive gaming experience in another esports game and that's a win in my book. So for integrated graphics, the Radeon 760M in the 8600G are actually pretty brilliant. It's great to see that integrated graphics are getting this good these days and they can in fact pretty much play anything for the most part as long as you don't mind making some sacrifices. In the AAA games today, you're not going to be getting excellent performance at all. You'll be stuck to 1080p low, maybe even enabling FSR to get slightly more playable frame rates. But games like Cyberpunk and even Hogwarts Legacy will run on an 8600G's 760M Radeon graphics, which is always great to see in my opinion. And of course, if you wanted to play esports games and solely esports games, the integrated GPU in the 8600G is going to be brilliant for that. In fact, you set for a 144Hz competitive gaming experience, which I think is absolutely incredible. And of course, if you want to play older games which are from the previous generation of consoles, so that's from around 2013 to around 2019-ish, performance in those titles is going to be great on integrated graphics like this. So if you wanted a low power retro machine, the 8600G is really not that bad for it. But that brings me on to the nicheness around this product. For most people, I wouldn't recommend the 8600G purely because you could get a Ryzen 5 7600 and a cheap used graphics card like an RX 470, which is in a video up there. And that should offer better gaming performance straight from the bat and better gaming performance in the future as you can upgrade that RX 470 to a more powerful graphics card and still enjoy the benefits of the Ryzen 5 7600 with its improved alpha e cache and better PCIe expansion capabilities interface that's the word I was looking for so that's a video idea I've come up with just now so if you want to see that video make sure you stay subscribed because I would like to test the 7600 and the RX 470 against the 8600G by itself as they do cost around the same amount of money but back to the 8600G and because it's such a niche product I can only recommend it to a small amount of PC gamers the best use case for this CPU or APU in my opinion is a low power small form factor sort of home theater PC. So if you live in an area where power consumption is a massive concern to you or if you just want a just an efficient machine which will play quite a few games I mean the 8600G is a decent CPU for that like I suspect a lot of people will be putting these into small form factor ITX machines sort of in their living room, that sort of thing. Also, if you wanted a very efficient esports or just retro gaming machine, the 8600G is also brilliant for that as well. But if you're a gamer that just wants to sort of save money and save up for their graphics card later down the line, I think you're better off with the Ryzen 5 7600 and just getting a cheap used GPU from sites like eBay. You're going to be covered with eBay buy protection anyways, 
so I wouldn't worry that much about buying an old used GPU. Also, when you come to upgrade it, you can also sell off that graphics card and recoup some of that cost and invest it elsewhere into your PC. So you can watch how I built this test bench in the video up there, or there's another GPU testing video down there. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you and have a good rest of your day.